So the leaders of my church have this thing they like to do called celebrating wins. This just means they bring attention to personal and corporate victories throughout the year, whether they be obvious or easier to miss. So while you wait on me to finish some longer bonus episodes, I thought we'd celebrate the wins of a few people I know by having them share some short stories involving spending time with friends in different life stages. I think the simple fact these single and married friends are doing life together in any capacity can be considered a win. One of my favorite parts of doing this podcast is it's been a way to include my friends in my creative pursuits. But I had to really narrow down the friends I spoke to for a whole episode. So this is a great way to let you hear from many more voices I haven't been able to include yet. This has been a really fun episode for me personally, and I hope it is for you too. And if you hear one of these stories and it reminds you of anything in your own life, I'd like to do more episodes like this. I'm hoping hearing how simple these stories are might encourage you to send me your own. I literally just asked these friends to record a voice memo on their phones and send them to me. It's nothing fancy. You can also do that and send them to professionalthirdwheelpodcast at gmail.com. If you think you'd cringe too hard hearing your own voice, don't let that stop you. Email me your story in written form and one of my friends will read it on the show instead. If none of that bothers you and you like living on the edge, you can also call the show's voice mailbox and tell it there. That number is 615-953-0360. All right, without further ado. And we're live. (laughs) (laughs) These are my besties, Jonathan and Callie. They were originally going to have their own episode, but distance and circumstances weren't in our favor. So for John's work one time, we were supposed to go to Dallas for a weekend work event. And we actually had a friend. We'll call her Jenny for the sake of the story. Jenny actually had a long distance boyfriend that lived in the same city that we were traveling to. So she decided to tag along for the ride and drive with us to this work event and stay the night with us. And we got on our formal wear and (laughs) Jenny, meanwhile, was getting ready to go on a date to Chili's with her at the time boyfriend with the intentions of breaking up with him (laughs) while we were there. Because she didn't want to do it, the text message or over the phone. Yeah, she didn't do it in person. But since it was a long distance relationship, she tagged along for our trip as a uh, an additional (laughs) friend. And then. (laughs) We had a fun time at the work event and she had gone to break up with him and then gone straight back and gone to bed. And then we woke up the next morning and (laughs) decided to make a day of it in the city we were in. So we took our leisure time getting out of the city and went to Fuzzy's, Dave and Buster's, and then stopped off at Ikea (laughs) on our way home. What a day. A three hour trip turned into an eight hour day that we got to spend and kind of have fun. Yeah, it was kind of in an effort to maybe cheer her up a little bit, but also she was just kind of, I think, in a place of relief and it was, <laughs> it went well. So we just had made a day of it and had a good time, all three of us together. And that's the time she came on a trip with us to <laughs> to break up with her boyfriend. Good times. <laughs> the second story. They sent me one more story. But I want to state for the record that I did not ask them to. And I've got my own notes at the end. Was actually a series of instances where Kevin, you actually came and were just visiting with us. That distance I mentioned earlier, they live a good eight or so hours away from me. We try to see each other once a year. It seemed as if there are... Multiple instances at the very least. Yeah, three or four times, separate occasions. Yeah. Once before we actually got married, because you came and helped me move over Christmas break, we moved into this apartment and you came and helped move all of our stuff there. But then we got married and you came into town and helped us move everything into our first apartment. And then it seemed like every move after that, it just happened to line up with some time frame that you were going to be in town. And I'm sure that was not the way that you intended on spending all of your waking moments with <laughs> us here in Oklahoma City. Yeah. But it 
just happened to be, oh, we're going to be moving that weekend. And you're like, that's fine. I'll be there. And so we moved three or maybe even four times at this point where Kevin was there. You've driven hundreds of miles to visit. (laughs) And help us move. And then get stuck helping us move. Yeah. You also attended quite a few of our family functions that (laughs) happened to align with the visitation dates and all that kind of stuff. But we had, you know, graduations and family reunions and (laughs) Met plenty of my family members, which was always fun that (laughs) they knew who Kevin was because Kevin was always there for these times. It just happened to line up that way. We didn't plan it out or anything like that, but it was just a fun time that you just hopped on in and joined us at what we had going on and (laughs) for all these different family events. And it's always a good time. So yeah, either moving or partying. Moving or partying. So, in my episode with Sam Alberry, I mentioned how wholeheartedly I was embraced by my best friend's wife's family. This is who I was talking about. As much as they just honored me for jumping in and helping when I was there for their various life transitions, I was treated as well as if I was Jonathan's actual brother by her entire family. That deserves just as much honor. So there, I got you back. Next, we're gonna hear from my friend Brianna. If you listen close, you might hear her name come up a couple of times in some future episodes. She's kind of a great friend. But rather than hearing about that, for this episode, we're going to be hearing a bit about those who modeled for her what she now practices for others. When I think about why I truly felt like I was content when I was single, there were a few people that just made a huge difference. I had a couple of friends One, my friend Becca, her husband and her got married very young and were just so instrumental in me feeling like I was part of a family even outside of my own nuclear family. They let me come in. They let me help take care of their baby when they had a baby. Dustin always made sure whoever I was dating met whatever standards he had. He would make sure that I wouldn't compromise. And I just felt like I was very protected and taken care of by being part of who they were as a couple. And I just really appreciated that. That translated when I started dating, looking for a spouse that would turn around and do that for my friends and make sure that my friends felt protected and loved and cared for and welcomed into our home. And when I met my husband, he met those things. He made sure one of my good friends didn't make bad financial decisions. And that is such it's just such a huge thing when you're single because the Lord has great things for single people, but sometimes it's just that missing of someone else watching out for you. And when you have that, you just feel so much better. You feel loved, you feel seen. And I'm just so grateful for Becca and Dustin seeing me when I was in my young 20s and struggling with being single, but then also being thankful for being single at the same time and the complications that come with both those emotions. The other people that were instrumental in me in my later 20s, feeling like I had a place, were my friends Stephen and Ariel. Stephen would do this the silliest things. Like he would let Ariel and I have girls' nights. And not only did he just like let us hang out and let me have my friend, but he would like go get the food for us. When Nashville had a snow day, which is a huge deal here, and we had like a foot of snow. So everything, absolutely everything shut down for three days. He made sure that, first of all, they invited me over and I got snowed in with them and stayed in their guest room. And then he would go get us food and he would make sure that we were taken care of. And he just really loved me as an extension of Ariel. And that spoke so much to me. And so being a single person with married friends, those married friends and their husbands just made me feel special. And I'm so, so grateful for them. We're going to hear now from my friend Tony. He's a pastor with many kids and has had single friends live with his family many times over the years. I remember one time out in Virginia had a young lady who is at our church who would come over to our house and just hang out with my wife and while they were talking, they would do something very practical like fold laundry. 
And I remember that being just a huge encouragement for my wife because, you know, we have six kids and that just means a ton of socks and a ton of T-shirts, a ton of clothes. But that practical use of time of coming over to talk, encourage one another and fold laundry just really stood out as one of those great encouragements that we shared with our single friends. Funny enough, this is probably the first lesson I learned when I was 18, hanging out with my original married friends, my youth pastor and his wife. A lot of hanging out when you're entering into a married couple's life is talking while running errands, whether that be folding laundry, making dinner, or in our case, most times, going to Walmart. Tony's got one more snapshot to share. There was one season that we had that was super busy. And one of our single friends, she noticed that we always ordered our groceries through like a delivery service. And one day she just said, hey, how about for a season of time, I just run to the store. You give me the list and I'll run to the store. I'll save you some money. I'll find things that are on sale. Uh, I'll knock out your list. And this is just something I want to do for you every week for a period of time. And I just thought that was a super thoughtful way for her to fold herself into our family and for us to fold her into our family. Eventually, we actually invited her to stay with us in a spare room that we had. And it was just such a blessing to be able to share life together with one of our single sisters. My name is Becca. I am a nurse and a writer, and I have been single for my whole life. There was a friend of mine that I went to college with, and she got married. And we lived in the same town for a short amount of time at that season in our lives. And then several years ago, we ended up back in the same town for a couple of years. At that point, they had a couple kids And it was so sweet to reconnect. And obviously we had some history behind our relationship. And so there was familiarity and safety in that friendship for sure. But, you know, obviously things change when people move into marriage and move into parenthood. And But that family in particular, they just did such a good job of including me and caring for me. One time in particular, it was Christmas, it was the holidays and... I was living far from my family at that time and had to work at the hospital for Christmas. And so I was going to be spending the holidays alone. And I've done that a handful of times. And it's always hard in some form or fashion. But they made plans with me because they were going to be away from family as well. And they were like, why don't you come over on Christmas Eve and spend the night, you know, come over after your shift, eat dinner, and then, you know, you'll have to go back to work in the morning, but at least you'll be with friends. And so I was looking forward to it. It was going to be a highlight of my holiday weekend. And it just turned into this sweet, hilarious evening where they had bought me matching pajama sets with their kids. They always do matching pajamas and they had included a pair for me. And the kids were in bed by the time I got there, but it didn't matter. I put them on and we enjoyed the milk and cookies that their daughter had put out for Santa and laughed hysterically at the note that she had written to Santa and crafted a response back from Santa for their daughter the next morning and put the gifts under the tree and the stockings up and watched the traditional movie that they watch every year for Christmas and just laughed a lot. It was just such a sweet time where I felt really included in their family. It wasn't awkward. They didn't make it like, oh, we have to you know, make it special because Becca's here. No, it was just their life. And I was just there and I was fully welcome in that moment. And 
that just was really meaningful to me and definitely was a highlight from (laughs) a lonely holiday season. I think back on that with such fondness and tenderness. And I'm so grateful for the friendships that I have that make that space and welcome me in. Becca has a great post on her Substack about singleness. I've linked to it in the show notes, so go give it a read. All right, the last story we're going to hear today is from my friend Carissa, and I am stoked that she was willing to share her experiences. You'll get why in a moment. We lived in the Philippines for about two and a half years. And while we were there, it was myself, my husband, and my two kids. There were many moments where I was just struck by the interrelationship between our family and our single friends. Something noteworthy about the Philippines and a lot of non-Western cultures is the communal aspect, the value of living in community. It's less individualistic. And there is actually a word frequently used in the language. It's called kasama. And a kasama is a companion. So, for example, if I would be getting ready to go to the market, it would be very common for whoever I'm sitting with, whoever's in my house at the time, to ask me, oh, who's your kasama? Like, you're not going by yourself. Are you going to have a companion? So it is assumed that, especially as a woman, that I wouldn't be going to the market by myself, whether it would be my husband going with me or a helper or someone who is a friend to keep me company. And this was with most going out, errand running, especially if you're going on a trip, it is very important that you have a kasama with you. It is also important that a kasama is with you at your house. So it is rare for a Filipino to live by themselves, even if they're single. In fact, if they're single, they would actually still be living with their parents usually, even if they're in their 30s and older. Actually, it's becoming a newer trend. I'm seeing in the younger generation as they are being really influenced by the West to try to get a job and earn enough to live independently from their parents. But that's more rare, at least in my experience in the region we were in. And so for me, as a married person, oftentimes my husband would be going on trips and would be gone for days at a time. And the community around me, my friends, the people that were working in our home would be very concerned, asking me all the time, like, who's your Kasama? And I would often say, like, well, me and the girls, like me and my kids. And that would be very concerning for my community. And so every time my husband would have to go on a trip that would be overnight, even if it was just for a night or two. I had these single friends throughout the day coming over to check on me. Sometimes they would bring me food. They would help take care of my girls. And I had a couple girls, single friends, they were sisters, and they would take turns staying the night at my house with me when my husband was not there. And It just seemed so normal at the time, thinking about how natural it is for them to invite themselves over and just be a presence in our home with me, even if it just meant that they may have been in the guest bedroom the whole time working on homework or their online job or whatever they needed to do, but them providing simply their presence in our home that really ministered to me. It taught me about 
this almost reverse hospitality. And part of it was security safety, but I wouldn't even say that was the majority reason. It just was an expression of this value in their culture that to be by yourself isn't good. And so I've also observed that in the reverse where it is very shocking for Filipinos to hear that when you're 18, you move out of your parents' home. Because even if it's to go to school or get a job or get work, you would be by yourself and to move far away. Like when they hear about how I moved two and a half hours to go to college after I graduated high school, it's pretty jarring for them because they are still living with their parents, with their relatives until they're married. And even sometimes when they're married, they're still living with them. And so you see single people in a way also being taken care of and that whether it be them living with their families or I don't hear very much about a roommate situation unless they are traveling far for work and they're in a boarding house. But typically I see this interrelationship between singles and marrieds taking care of one another like family. That is something that I think coming back here to the States, seeing such separation almost, it's not second nature the way it is in the Philippines. Like here, you have to be intentional to meet up with your single friends and check in on them or invite them over. And they have to be intentional to walk alongside you in family life and marriage. And it's almost like finding space in our American busy schedules and even in our individualistic thinking. Like I think of military families and wonder, you know, a lot of these wives or even husbands who are at home by themselves while their spouse is serving the country. And it's not something that you really see here in our culture. And that's something I've really taken away that um, I really miss about the Philippines and how well my friends married or single, their relationship status didn't really seem to be anything I noticed as far as interactions go because of how fluid and natural living life together was. They're already doing life in community with one another, and we just got kind of adopted into that culture. May this kind of community not sound so foreign to us someday very soon. to all my friends who agreed to share their stories. Don't forget that you can do the same. Email me your story as a voice memo or as text, or leave a message in the show's voicemail box. I'm going to cut the credits a bit short today. Basically, Kyle Patterson did the logo and I did everything else. Please go review the show and hang tight. There's more on the way.